Next episode of Inside This Giant Moment presented by T-Mobile. I'm Mark Willard and really excited to have Mauricio Dubon with us today. Mauricio, how are you? Good, good. Getting ready to play here. <laughs> yeah, man. I, uh, I'm excited to talk to you. You know, you, uh, I mean, look at you guys. Here you are contending for, uh, for the playoffs. I wonder how this year uh, and the reality of it sort of matches whatever your, your vision was for it before it started. Uh, it's the same. I'm, I, I kept saying in spring training, uh, we're a good team. And, uh, you know, the veterans have been busting their behind. And we got young guys that are hungry for, you know, for success. And, you know, everything is clicking right now. We, we just came off a, of a tough series against the, the Padres. But uh, we feel pretty, pretty good about ourselves right now. What about those Padres real quick, by the way? I mean, they got some serious swagger. Um, what, uh, yeah, what do you see in them? Um, they, just, they can play baseball. Uh, like, they play good baseball, and they, um, they, uh, they don't miss the opportunities. And, I mean, they have some young guys over there that are, like, they're, they're going to be something special later on. But, um, yeah. like I said, I feel confident in the team we have, and we can, you know, you know we can make something happen with the, with the guys we have. So center fielder Mauricio Dubon, how does that sound to you? I love it. I love it. Every, <laughs> every, time, every time I get more excited now, every time I go. I used to get excited when I used to go to the field. Now I get even more excited every time I, I get to play center field. It's fun. It's fun. It's just because the amount of work I put out there and, uh, you know, all the, the, the good things are happening when, I, when I'm out there. I mean, it's it's – it's something special. Was there a mental process you had to go through to sort of deal with the fact that, I mean, at least for now, who knows where this is all going, with, especially with the way the Giants sort of approach things. But uh, at least for now, it, it looks like the Giants are not going to use you very much in the infield, which I'm sure is where you thought you were going to play when you got to the bigs. It's, it's, it's funny because I, I um, worked my whole life to be an infielder, and yeah. I worked – three months to be a center fielder. And I, I never enjoyed so much to play a baseball game when I'm playing center field. Like it's, it's so fun going out there and the way I've been, I've been playing and the way I've, I've been, you know, they've been teaching me. I mean, Antoine, the outfield guy and, and, and Lisa has been, you know, they've been giving me a lot of trust and going out there and, and doing my way, doing like the way I, I want to do it. You know, we, for me mentally was, you know, I don't want to be, a utility guy. I want to be somewhere that goes out there and play every day. And, and if I do that, if I go out and play center field, I'm not going to be a utility guy. I'm going to be a center fielder. So I got to start thinking like a center fielder. And it was a lot of videos. It was a lot of mental stuff that for me, you know, it helped me out a lot um, going out there. I hear a lot of people say to me, hey, you're really smooth out there. Like you, like, you look like you know what you're doing. Yes, because I busted my behind you know trying to look like that trying to you know look like a center fielder not like a infield guy go over there go over there and and, and try to play out there so what was that work like you said you busted your behind for three months take, take us inside that 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 three-month window and what it was like oh at the beginning was when I got to spring training and they planned me the idea of you know possibly playing out there. At the beginning it was horrible it was horrible like it was like I knew I was an athlete <laughs> so I defend myself a little bit but uh, I was thinking of a shortstop, you know, because a lot of people say, oh, no, just go out there and play, and you're a shortstop. Play like you're playing short. And I was, that was the biggest mistake they could have told me because I was trying to play short. And, you know, as an infielder, the first reaction you get to the ball is go forward, go get the ball. And if you do that in outfield, you're screwed. You can't get the balls like that. Right. <laughs> and for me, it was just, you know, just asking a lot of questions, asking people, hey, What's your thought on this? What do you think about this? I mean, I call a lot of people. I mean, I I'll, I'll, I'll call Quentin Berry. Um, he's with the Brewers, and he was my coach. I mean, big, uh, long time uh, MLB career. So that's a guy that for me was, you know, he's a great center fielder. Why not pick his brand? I mean, Michael Taylor, Jackie Bradley, all those guys that um, they're elite in their positions. Um, just trying to pick their brains, what they were thinking, instead of you know me trying to be a center, trying to be a shortstop to play center fielder. I mean, I did everything possible for me. I look on YouTube videos of, you know, per perspective from the outfield because I couldn't go outside. I couldn't go outside because of right. the whole pandemic. So I try to find perspective videos from center field to the home plate. 
Um, sometimes I even play MLB The Show so I can be the center and just trying to get that look. But um, it, it was a lot of work I was putting in, you know, just for me to be able to, to have the impact I'm having right now. Uh, what a perfectly 2020 way to learn center field in the middle of a pandemic. MLB The Show. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was really crazy, like the whole thing. And, and there were, literally there was time that I cleared out the whole space in the, in the, in my living room. And, and my fiance used to laugh at this because like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm trying to get ready. Like, you don't have, like, I'm, like, I'm trying to find ways. And used to pull games and I was doing the pre pitch in there. Like I was in center field and try to get the good jumps to where the ball was. And I mean, stuff like that, just trying to get my mind ready for me to play center field. And when summer time came, I feel like I was ready to go. Even the Antoine, like the, the outfield coach was telling me, you know, to be honest with you, I didn't realize, I, you were horrible when you came. And, <laughs> and, and now, now seeing you now, it's looking at the work you put in, like you can be our center fielder. And I'm like, dude, I'm telling you, like I used to tell him all the time, I got you, don't worry, I'll find a way to get better. Don't worry, I got you. And now he, he's so excited and everything, like, like you get excited every time you make a good play. I'm like, dude, don't get excited. Get used to it now. Like, don't right. <laughs> do you now see center field as the future for you? Um, I hope so. I really do. I love center field. I love playing out there. Um, I mean, it, it, it's something that I always had in my mind. Something like that. I feel like for me it was always that that it was out there for me. Like you know, I used to go with Shaq. And like be able to like catch ball and everything, and I'm like, man, like I could, do, I feel if I work on this, I could be really good at it. And I mean, with all that's going on, I mean, I, I honestly see myself like for a long time out there. But like I said, <clears throat> wherever they want to put me, but I would love to be out there for for 162 games. So you, if you never play another day of shortstop in your life, you're okay. I didn't bring my glove for the road trip. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I but, answered that question. <laughs> and, and if it's an emergency, you need somebody's glove. So, but uh, everything now, like I keep telling people, I'm an outfielder. I'm an outfielder now. Me and Kra talk all the time about stuff like that. Like, like he's very, he's a he's a good glover. Like he's a yeah, one of the best defenders I've played with and seen. And he um. Every time he goes, his his back is back uh, to the, towards the infield, like going back and trying to catch the ball. And I tell him all the time, hey, you don't have to do that anymore. I got it. Don't worry. I got it. Don't have to go all come all the way over here. That's why when he catches a fly ball near like the infield, he always laughs at me because like I thought you had it. I thought I had it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Um, okay, let let's go back to the journey that brought you to the San Francisco Giants. Take us through the day. Uh, that you found out you were traded from the Brewers to uh, to the Giants. What, and what happened that day? I was just happy hearing rumors that the, you know, the, at the beginning of, this, of the deadline, of the, of the trade up here, they were like saying, hey, you know, you might get traded. Like I was reading stuff. You might get traded to the Giants. Like, make it happen. Just make it yeah. happen. You to go home. <laughs> and the deadline came and I'm like, in my my host parents kept texting me every day. Did it happen? Did it happen? Did it happen? Not yet. Not yet. And it was crazy because we were playing the River Cats at that time. I was in San Antonio we playing against the River Cats. I played the first game against the, the River Cats. And then the next day was the deadline. And when I was, when I was ready to come to the field, um, I just got a call. Hey, congrats. You got, not, not second grade, but hey, uh, just, we traded you to the San Francisco Giants. When he said we traded you to San Francisco Giants, I have no idea what he said after. Like, I was so happy. And I was like, okay, okay, thank you. Okay, and, and okay. Then and hang, hang up the phone and I'm like, what now? Call my parents. And when I told them, like, hey, I've got traded. Like, no, he was like, hey, did it happen? I'm like, yeah, I'm a Giants now. And I just heard my mom crying on the all the way, like, <laughs> like in the shower or something. And it was happy. And, and it was something that, you know, you, you see yourself playing for, you know, you always say as a kid, I want to play here, but when it actually happens, it's, it's something that 
that is pretty pretty unique and pretty special and gives you more motivation. Hey, I'm here now. Like it means more to win now than 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 you know winning for another team. I mean, you're playing for the team that you root for, and you know it means more. Like you makes more sacrifice, means more more and more to you. Like there's times like <laughs> when the base running blunder happened. Like I it, I was mm. I was upset just because. I was like, damn, man, like, I, like that, that can't happen. Like, it was, for me, it was, I felt like I, I saw myself as a fan and yelling at myself, like, come on, man, you can't, you, you can't do that stuff. We got to pick it up. And then, you know, kind of like, <laughs> I'm able to do that. What I did, it was, it was, you know, it was, it was lifting. But, but for me, it's extra special. You know, I go out there and try to give it all because, you know, as a fan and, you know, as a giant, it, it, it's, it's, it's really unique. You felt like you let everybody down. Is I felt that, that, everybody yeah. down. I felt I let everybody down, and and I felt like it for me it was like I know how baseball is. At the end of the day, it's 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 gonna bite in the butt. But like I said, we we are we have a good team. We have a pretty good guy. So you know, it, it was you know really comforting having the guys telling you it's fine. It's gonna happen. But um. Like I say, that is never going to happen to me ever again. <laughs> yeah, well, you, I, yeah, you've mentioned a few times, right? Those are the lessons. And actually, it's funny because when you look at the growing pains a young player usually goes through, uh, you mentioned that one. You've had relatively few. I, I mean, I'm looking at your numbers right now. Se about 70 games or so as a Giant. And, and your career average is, is 277. And you've been right there. Last year, this year, you're about a 280 hitter. And, and you just jumped right in and did it. So, so what helped you avoid, uh, you know, those, uh, those rookie growing pains? Um, it, it's a thing for me that, you know, it's, I always thought of it as baseball. Baseball is the same. It's everywhere. Whenever you go, same baseball playing when I'm in Honduras is the same baseball playing when I'm here in the States. And for me, I'm very receptive of, of stuff that uh, people tell me all the time. And, you know, Thank God we have the veterans we have that has been helping me so much of growing as a player. I mean, I got Craw, I got Longo, I got Bell. I mean, I got Posey. I got all these veteran guys that help me not go down. Because I go down. Like, you see like you see guys, like, I go down when they, I come up and just trying to stay level-headed. But those guys help me so much of, you know, of, of not, not, not sink, not to sink. You know, I go down a little bit and get back up. And you know, having those guys, it's it's been it's been a blessing. I mean, I'm able to learn from one of the best uh, infielders in the game. I let to learn from Longo. I mean, I get to learn from Belt. I mean, it, those guys are are doing what as a young player you want to uh, achieve as a as a major league baseball player. I mean, Longo has 300 plus uh, plus home runs. I mean, it doesn't happen like just by accident. So I, for me, it was always you know the 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 virtue of learning. I want to learn from these guys. What make them so special? What make them so good? And for me, it was able to, you know, I mean, I'm still learning. I'm still learning the, I mean, I just have 70 games. That's it. But for me, it's just still learning, uh, you know, the level and for me learning, you know, the mindset of, of this guys out here. You know, it's interesting. You talk about the, the emotional highs and lows and, and some of the guys you mentioned there, like, they're, they're so even keel. You can see it when, when, when they play. Sometimes, though, you know, I, I look at you and I think one of the reasons the fans identify with you so much is that you do show some of that emotion. So, and I know that's you. So, so how, do you, how do you stay you, but then, and, but then not, as you say, kind of crater sometimes? It's more of a mindset. Like, for me, like, for, for me, it's always about a mindset. Like, if I do something good, like, like I'm like, yeah, I did something good. If I did something bad and I feel bad about myself and move on and move on. For me, when I do something bad, it's about moving on. I um, mean, for me, it's always, I love this game so much that what, what comes out sometimes, I don't even know what comes out. It's just me. Like when I had the triple, uh, I, was, I was like, yeah, let's go. Like back-to-back -back triples, me and Bart, like, let's go. We got a game going on. It's never like predetermined. I'm going to do this if, if I hit it out. I'm going like, to, it's always like out of emotion, like, like this game is so hard for you not to, for you not to feel you know good. Like for you like not to like show it. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, and those, you know, speaking of the emotions also, uh, I wonder if uh, now that you've kind of been here and established for a year, if it is kind of an opportunity for you to reflect it all um, and, and what I imagine to be an emotional year for you, you know, uh, sort of looking back on, on your life and that, that quick decision you've shared about leaving Honduras for, for Sacramento years ago, that was a decade ago, obviously a very good decision with the way it's, it's worked out. But, but do, do you think about that at all and, and where, where you'd be right now if you, if you hadn't made that decision? Every day that I go play a baseball game, I think about it. Every day that I go out there and I, thank God I left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it, it's, it's something for me that, that it, it helps me remind myself where I come from. And if I wouldn't make my, my parents' sacrifices, I wouldn't be here. And that's why I enjoy this game so much because – it, it was so hard for my people. It's so hard for, for, for somebody to get there, to get where I am today from, you know, I'm the first one ever. So it's, it's, they never had that. And it's, it's, it's funny because <laughs> when, when you see like my games and you see um, highlights of my games on Twitter, Instagram, you see the comments, most of the comments are from people back home. And it's crazy because they watch the game. There's literally like people streaming games in TGI Fridays, restaurants, and everything because I'm playing that game. And and it's crazy to think about stuff like that because, you know, I used to go to TGI Fridays and watch some some <laughs> uh, some other game, yeah. NLCS, whatever. And now I'm um, no, they're watching me play, and you know, guys baseball field that they watch me play they watch me grow up they watch me practice every time I go out there and and you know it's special for them too gosh what a what a thought I mean and, and what a thing that that so many of your brethren in baseball don't experience I mean to have an entire nation basically following you inspired by what you're doing can you put that into words it's it's crazy like it's really crazy because like, I see kids now in the Little League, like, wearing number one, wearing pants up, doing big leg kick. Like, uh, it's it's crazy, like, to see that. And and for me, I'm, I'm always, like, when I go back home, and like, I practice, and I see kids standing on the rail, like, looking at me. I'm like, you can come if you want. Like, I've got no problem. Like, you can practice. Yeah. And, and they're, like, they get surprised. Like, are you? I'm like, yeah, dude. Like, I'm practicing. Not like I'm going <laughs> out of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so it, 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 it's something that you know I want them to see like I'm no different than anybody else it's just you know I work really hard to get where I, where I have and you know, I'm gonna keep working really hard to to get more and you know if I can do it you guys can do it too yeah yeah no I think you've shown that and by the way I do want you to know though that uh, you, you inspire kids from from America as well our, our six-year-old has declared you his favorite player <laughs> and it's a good it's a good thing he's at his little pod school right now or else he would be running in and out of this room going crazy because he wants to get a look at you. <laughs> oh man, it's good stuff. What what are your what are your conversations with uh with family like now ever since you did make that decision? Um it's like at the beginning it was hard, but now it's just like they're used to it now, so they're like yeah. they're more they're more like, hey, how come you swing at that slider on the dirt? I mean, the guy's pumping on me. I'm going to be uh, he's me. But now it, it's it's more of, of encouragement than anything. It's more like, hey, let's go, and uh, make it happen. Big week ahead uh, or big game tomorrow. You know, make something happen. And when something good happens, they're like, hey, out of boy and everything. Forget about it today. You got a new game tomorrow. It's constantly reminding me of. You know, don't settle, don't, don't, don't get complacent and keep the feet on the ground. Um, you know, I, um, I, I wonder with such a transition uh, that you've experienced, and, and obviously it's over a long period of time, but, but the most recent one is, is, is certainly becoming a big leaguer and, and then staying one. And so I wonder what, what, what role has the organization and the veterans on it? You mentioned the relationship you have with Crawford, for instance. Uh, what role have they all played in, in helping – uh, you transition uh, to, to life as a big leaguer? You know, uh, 
big leagues people, I mean, we have they're better guys, of course. There's no doubt. But you have the ability to be there. It's more the mental side of it. The the more it's more the the what are you gonna do when you go for four? What are you gonna do when you go three for three? Uh, it's stuff like that. What are you gonna do when you messed up in the bases? Like stuff yeah. like that. Like so, it it's more more it's more mental than anything else. And you know, being being a big leaguer is being more consistent. Who makes the few errors? Because you're gonna make errors. But who who makes the last error? And thank God this this guy's been helping me in that in that way. My belt has been helping me a lot in my play discipline. I mean, I'm a guy that that you gotta stay swing the bat, and you know he's been helping me out with that stuff. And I've been driving the baseball a little bit more. I mean, proud with the consistency. I mean, all these guys, the mental approach, all these guys have been helping me in one little detail of my game, and put and it's coming, you know, coming along and putting everything together. And I mean, I, I, from everybody, literally, I asked everybody something. I mean, I asked Yas, I asked Trump, I asked. Like the even like the guy like you said like oh he's not playing every day I asked him something just because I know they can do something a little bit better than I did and so I try to if if it doesn't work for me I try to ask hey why you did that or why are you thinking of that and I ask them why so I just want to see what what they think about it and maybe I can put in my game right now but um I mean it, like this guy has been keeping me level headed and grounded and mentally you know tough throughout this whole thing yeah yeah very cool all right behind the mask let's uh, let's do it three questions that are specific to pandemic baseball if you will uh what's the strangest thing you've experienced through all of this that's that's going on with the game i think it was the false positive we had it was yeah. like the weirdest thing because i was playing next to, to dicky when it happened and 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 um and i heard like you tested positive and I'm like looking around I'm like oh my god I, I'm positive too because I'm playing catch with him <laughs> <laughs> we can laugh now we can laugh yeah, now. yeah. yeah we can laugh now but uh, at the time it was everybody was stressed out I mean everybody had like a little sort of, of, of contact but um I mean we were ready to go ready to play a game I had icy hot all over my body got it again for me it was just that one that like the 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 false positive everybody had to run off the field and no game and nobody had an idea what was going on and and I knew what was going on and a lot of people were asking what was going on but I was having I can't tell you what's going on because right. <laughs> so that was that was the difficult thing for me. Oh. By the way, I've heard a few of you guys say this now. It seemed like his nickname last year was Dick, and now it's Dicky. When when did this get changed? Uh, it's Dicky on TV. It's Dick on on. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're on a podcast, so you can say whatever you want. Just, you know. <laughs> All right. Um, other than baseball, what activity has gotten you through this time? You know, um, because I I. I I play a lot of video games. I play a lot of video games. I play, uh, I watch a lot of TV. Um, fiance wants me, uh, wants me to watch a couple of shows with her that, you know, that it's, you know, it's her show. So I just watch it with her, but it's right. fun. Like, it's fun. Like I got nothing else to do. So just watch TV with her. Um, and then lastly, what part of the new protocol around baseball or just anything that's new this year, uh, what part of that would you like to keep forever? Uh, the eight team go to the playoffs. Playoff there you go. Playoffs baseball is fun. I wish we can have like the eight teams that we can we can have in the in the in the postseason. I mean, we have a there's no eight teams we don't go to playoffs. So for me, it's it's good. Yeah, yeah, I think that might be coming. All right, you know, you, you've you've been labeled a fan favorite right out of the gate. Again, just I think because of the way you play with the joy. Uh, but this year there are no fans. So so how how has that affected you personally? Oh, it's been tough. It's been tough because I I feed off that um yeah the fan base either it's good or it's bad. Like I feed off that, and not having fans is a little weird and tough because you know you you bottom of the eight you hear like the crowd of like I gotta be locked in right now because it's a big bat. So it's it's a little tough. Hopefully next year um. You know, we we came back to normal, but um, you know, having fans fans in the in the in the stands, you know, 
increase my game a little bit. Um, sometimes I hear on the cove there when I'm in center, I can hear like some of the fans yelling and stuff. So that's that's pretty good. But um, I mean, I wish we can have fans right now. Yeah. They, they elevate. Have you had to make Have you had to make adjustments to to anything because uh, of that? Ah, uh, yes, actually a lot. I mean, like sometimes when you get to um to the field, you're stretching. You kind of you know you're getting pumped and like you get in the blood flowing because um. Because you know the fans are yelling and everything, and they hear the roar of the crowd. Right now, there's nobody, so you gotta create your own, your own vibe and your own, your own everything. I mean, a lot of people got <laughs> a lot of everything. I mean, it's 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 something that you gotta create on your own. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, um, let's look forward. How how has this year and everything that's taken place uh, changed your vision uh, of your future as a as a giant and as a big leaguer? Um, I didn't know that I was a good center fielder. <laughs> I there didn't you go. know that. And thanks to this, I mean, I ended up finding out, and I don't want to leave that spot. I want to stay there forever. So it's something that, that um, you know, it's been helping me out, too, with the way I see as a as a player, too. Like, you know, my bats are getting better, and that's something that my, pitch, my play discipline was my biggest issue coming up, and now I'll be able to control it. Now I'm able to, you know, to put great at bats, uh, so it's it's something that you know is going to go for a long run, and actually I'm really excited for for what's coming up. Do you do you look forward also from a team sense? Like there's a lot of talk right now about the Giants farm system. There was Bart at the beginning of the year; he's now here, but a Ramos and a Luciano and a Toribio and a Canario. You you know all these guys. Do you do you daydream about that group all all being together out yeah. out on the big field? I saw these guys in summer camp, and I'm like, Damn, these guys are good. These guys, I, mean, I got, from, yeah, what's his name? Um, uh, the shortstop, I, I forget, I keep missing. Lu- it. Luciano. Luciano, yeah. Luciano, Luciano yes. Luciano hit a ball almost to the glove, and I'm like, this kid is 19 years old, hit a ball to the glove. <laughs> I mean, it's exciting, it's exciting, and, and hopefully when they come up, I'm, I'm ready to, you know, take that role of, you know, kind of like, Tell them how it is, you know. Hey, I'm sure you do. Don't don't worry about that. You're fine. Kind of like what they did with me. Kind of like what yeah, Pro did with me. Kind of what Posey uh, did with me. Longo, Bell, all those guys are doing with me. So, you know, it's a learning experience for me right now. So I can later on, I can you know pass it on too. Yeah, where are you on that learning curve? I mean, I'm sure that uh, as you're still learning, but it, it's different than it was say a year ago at this time. Yeah, I don't ask as much questions like I did last year, but I still have a couple questions. Like I ask, "Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that?" Like stuff, and and um, you know, they're they're crowd don't like to ask questions. Like, because I, I sometimes I apologize, dude. I'm sorry, I'm asking too many questions. But what what? Right. No, I said like, dude, it's fine. Like, I like to ask questions because I don't wanna, I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna not know anything. So it's it's something that 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 um. I take very pride of asking a lot of people like you know, questions and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm sure the veterans uh, take that very well. Um, okay, you've mentioned it. You, you talked about the expanded playoffs. What, what, do, what do you think? How far can this team go? Even here, you never know. <laughs> or do you guys talk about it right now, or is it is it taboo? I mean, there's 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 enough games left that this could still go a lot of different ways. No, I mean the the main goal every year is to go to the playoffs, and you know everybody knows it's it's something that you know we're working towards for, and and you know being so close right now, you don't want to you know have any blunders. You want to you know play the best game you, you can play, and you know we're just gonna kind of getting ready for, you know, winning games, win games. And if we win games, we'll, we'll be in. Yeah, yeah. Do you think about potentially playing the Dodgers? I mean, that, it's tracking potentially that way. It's never happened before in the history of the, of the postseason. Do, do you imagine what that would be like? And, and is that on your guys' mind? Um, I mean, we, we have the scenarios and everything. But um, like, like I say, like we, wherever we play, it, it will be good. I mean, we – like I said, um, the rivalry will be a, a good uh, postseason. But uh, like I said, wherever we play, I feel we are, we're capable. We're good enough you know, to play against anybody. 
Is there a different vibe when you guys are playing the Dodgers or, or the Padres right now, just because of, you know, we talked earlier about the, the vibe that the Padres are, are putting out, the Dodgers, the traditional rival, they're really, really good. Uh, they're really good teams. Does it feel different playing them? Um, I mean, I wish I could tell you no, but, but yeah, it's different. Like you, yeah. you focus more. You're like, okay, we, can, we, we have to make less errors. We have to make, you know, a few mistakes. I mean, I think we're, I think we play the Dodgers the best out of any team, I think. When, every yeah. time them. And, um, and I don't know, it just, it's something that, you know, you don't want to, you know, we're very prideful in a sense that we want to win every game and, you know, we don't want to look bad. We want to, you know, put respect and everything. So, so it's, it's something that, that we go all out every time we play those teams. Yeah, you. I mean, you mentioned looking at the future within the organization. What about the division? I mean, have you taken a look at what the next five years of the NL West might look like? I mean, it yeah. might be really powerful. It's scary. It's going to be scary yeah. because I, I was saying, like, we're, we're the best division in baseball right now. I mean, we got three teams, uh, hopefully three teams in the playoffs. So it's something that, that it's scary and, and fun at the same time. Uh, the Inside Giant Moments podcast presented by T-Mobile. Mauricio Dubon, our guest. This has been an absolute blast. I knew it would be. And, uh, and I thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank you.